Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. A very simple test on dynamic range is about to happen. Right now I'm talking to the Panasonic Lumix LX100. Same settings. I have them both set on portrait for the picture standard, for the picture uh, style. Uh, contrast, zero, sharpness, plus one, clarity, minus one. However, you cannot minus clarity on the Lumix, so I left that at zero on the Nikon. Uh, saturation is also minus one. So this is the Lumix, blown out window as you can see. This is the Nikon, still blown out window. You can do a few different shots here, looking outside versus inside, that's a big difference. Some dark corners, lights off, lights on, blah blah blah. But this is my channel, hope you enjoy this. So as you can see, we'll just start here, right? On the D750, I'm getting highlight zebra pattern here. Windows blown right out pretty much. LX100, however, no zebra pattern, no highlight alerts, and you can see some buildings back there. So, that's one for the Lumix. So, like I said, we're both running the same settings here, 30 FPS, so that's going to leave me at a 1 60th of a shutter speed. I'm shooting at an aperture of f16, uh, which is the max the Lumix can do, uh, and we're at ISO 200 because that's the lowest the Lumix can go. So. This is what you have with the Nikon right now, the D750. As you can see, this is not too much blown out, not too vast. Now compared to the LX100, the shadows are a little bit more apparent. And you can set the shadow curves and the darks and the light curves on this camera, which is very nice. And you can also set what's called eye dynamic, uh, and that's all at normal for me. It's all at zero and uh, normal, so, or off. So for this desk, for, the, for this test, we have my desk. We're set at f13, uh, again 1 60th of a second, ISO 200, and you can see it's pretty dark, pretty dark indeed. We've got the light coming in from the right side, from the window, and we also have a light underneath, like the monitor there. As you can see on the LX100, the shadows appear to be a little bit brighter, so hence the dynamic range is slightly larger here. It's with the D750 now, and this is kind of a typical thing you'll get with YouTubers and a lot of people, bloggers kind of thing. They'll stand in front of a wall, or they'll sit down on a bed or something like that. Plain wall. They'll have two lights on them, or just uh, the ambient natural light that's currently on me. Uh, for this type of thing, dynamic range is not something you need really that much of. Unless you have strong shadows on your face, like if the sun was beating on me this way and it was dark as shit over there, dynamic range would be helpful there. But in this case, it's all pretty uh, natural and neutral here. So let's get over to the LX100 now. So right now we're on the LX100. It uh, might be a little bit crooked, but I'm not going to fix that. We're shooting here, uh, both on the D750 and the LX100. 160th of a second, ISO 200, F5.6. Now, you can probably see, versus the D750, that my face, uh, the shadows are not as apparent. Uh, I haven't seen the footage yet, but that would just be my guess, since the Lumix has a, a little bit better dynamic range. So, there's that. Apparently, right here, you're looking at the bottom of my bed with the D750. I am at F16, 160th, ISO 200. Here is F16. 60 frames a second ISO 200 in the Lumix. You can see it's a little bit brighter. The highlights are the same, but the darks are slightly higher than the D750. This is a typical shot here you'll find, kitchen shot. 1 60th of a second, F8, ISO 800. Now, there's not much difference in this area. However, the shadows do shine on the LX100. This is currently the D750. See, not that much of a difference. This is the LX100 now, same settings. So this is the end of the video, and you can see the biggest difference right now. The LX100 really just shines in the highlights. The LX100 is about $1,100 or a thousand bucks, depending, I think, somewhere like that. The D750, however, uh, two grand-ish, and then lenses on top of that because they're interchangeable. So, I mean, you have tons of other reviews check out on YouTube here, just comparing that. The biggest difference I've got here the LX100 is going to be lighter, cheaper, records 4K, and the noise performance 
way better if you do a video okay uh, check out the noise you check on Breaking Bad or something the, uh, the like the box set Breaking Bad you can see all the little noise the film grain right it's super apparent and the LX100 does a good job of replicating that film grain uh, however the D750 looks like crap film grain like it's not something you'd want in your videos whereas the LX100 would be something you want in your videos so there's that and obviously the windows not as blown out so there's that um, 4k there's that 24 frames a second there's that <laughs> um, batteries are not that expensive I mean it's just I think it's just better for this kind of stuff obviously the D750 paired with a good lens is going to yield a better image for stills that's what it's meant for so it's not meant for video but the LX100 is going to yield better video so if you're a YouTube video guy LX100 if you're a photographer and you do videos on the side like me um, D750 or uh, Canon 5D Mark III would be the better choice for that because it has better video performance than the D750 but anyway that's uh, that's my stuff. Until further news, I shall talk to you later. Hopefully you enjoyed that.